Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Sing Amen. 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 Oh, we prophesy. Let it be so. Let it be so that we are changed. We are transformed in His presence. Amen. Be the name of the Lord, Spirit of the Living God. We thank you. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough of you. This is my confession. I cannot have enough. I cannot. I cannot have enough of you. It takes hunger to get deeper with God. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough of you. One more time. We cannot have enough. We cannot have enough. We cannot have enough of you. Spirit of the living God, we submit ourselves to you tonight. Oh, great rabbi, help us. Open up the things of the spirit unto us and cause us to hear and to understand. Teach us that which is true and authentic. And by knowledge, cause us to rise beyond the limitations that come with this system. Lord, we submit ourselves to your dealings. We humble ourselves and we take up meek hearts in your presence. Hearts that are palpable, hearts that are malleable, hearts that are, are allowed to be molded and to be changed in your presence. Equip us through knowledge, equip us through revelation. Let us never be familiar with the things of the Spirit. And cause, O oh God, that we will not hear these things just as informations, but that they will sustain the ability to be received in our spirit, and that they will produce a hundredfold in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of us once again. There are people coming in from everywhere. Those of you who came in from Joss, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time. And then, let me not be biased. Other states, we are all welcome. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Let's get to the word of God. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. There's a mighty presence of God in this place. We give him all the praise for the gift of his presence. Without the presence of God, we are only storytellers. It takes the presence of God to effect changes. There are many people seated here who are sick. He didn't even come to hear anything. There are people who came sick. Um, the fact that we have miracle services at the end of the month, it doesn't mean that other services are not miracle services. We just dedicate time to minister to the needs of people according to the measure of grace that he has given us. This is an apostolic ministry. Hallelujah. Paul speaking, he said, a man approved of God with miracles and signs. There are activities of the spirit that follow these kinds of ministry and this is why we take out the time to generously minister to the people of God. I'm one preacher that believes that I've been called to minister to the needs of the people. Hallelujah. I always tell men of God when I have the privilege to speak in pastors conferences I tell them if you are not prepared to minister to the needs of people get set for empty chairs in your church. Hallelujah. Because the people don't just come because they love you. They come because they have serious problems. Hallelujah. And so while we pray and fast and prepare for every meeting every week, I like you to understand that part of our prayer is not just that the word prevails in our minds. The Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. We don't just want the word of God to prevail alone. But we want the sick to be healed in every service. Hallelujah. We want the oppressed to be delivered. So as the word of God is coming right now, I'd like you to prepare your heart. We may be talking about something else. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit's goal is to see himself when he looks at you. And every time he looks at you and sees that there is, there is something that is planted in you that was not planted by him, he will take it away. We can be teaching on relationship and family life. We can be teaching on finances. Yet God is healing sick bodies. Because there is an anointing. And that anointing must answer to why it is there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. We there. One, two, read. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. One more time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hallelujah. One of the greatest blessings I believe of God in my life, aside from the gracious knowledge of the person of the Holy Spirit. One of the greatest blessings that I consider from God to me is the deliverance that he brought to my mind by letting me know that the kingdom is founded upon definite structures. I, I, do you understand what I'm saying? I grew up and I was taught that whatever will be, will be. Have you heard that kind of teaching? I was taught that whatever happens, just give thanks and don't ask any question. I was taught that whatever you don't understand, God doesn't want you to understand. If he wants it, he will reveal it to you. So I grew up letting God become absolutely responsible for my life. And it looked very spiritual. Hallelujah. And I found out that my life was like a chess. Anything would just be played left, right and center. Just like many of our lives. But then I got to understand by revelation and by the ministry of treasures in the body of Christ. How that when it comes to the gospel of the kingdom, it is a gospel of partnership. Many men of God call it covenant. I choose to call it partnership. The reason is because in a covenant, if you break the terms of the contract, 
you will suffer but in partnership your partner can help you even when you default you see why i choose to call it partnership i'm not against the concept of covenant but i i feel comfortable knowing that i'm in partnership with the spirit because it is possible to be in partnership with someone who is able to cover for your limitations and that introduces the mercy of god in the equation but the fact that the mercy of god is available does not mean that i will not play my role hallelujah praise the lord and week after week by the grace of god is that rain please come in ushers coordinate them let's be very fast come in sit everywhere everywhere please come in come in come in with your chairs as much as possible we apologize it's a rainy season come in just bring them in please let the rain not we already appreciate your commitment bring them in their spaces add you can add more seats in front please hallelujah we really apologize we're a very responsible ministry and my heart goes out to all those who do not have seats or those who are outside we really apologize praise god you can add more chairs in front bring them in front don't feel embarrassed relax make yourself very comfortable One of the reasons why men of God do not get blessed and one of the reasons why God does not honor many ministries with people is because they do not know that ministry is all about people. Hallelujah. When you treat people like animals, they will not come to your church or to your meeting. Hallelujah. Forget the fact that we teach and say, okay, the Holy Spirit is this. If you like, don't come and get blessed. By the time you see empty pews again and again, you must change your confession. We treat people with honor and dignity because the Bible says, now we do not yet appear we shall, what we shall be like. We realize that we are treating men and women of royalty, men of dignity. Only God can tell how far. Because the word of God that we teach and preach is the incorruptible word of God that is able to make any man become great. Once again, we apologize. Thank you, Jesus. So tonight I'm teaching on one of those keys again. Many of us have been receiving these keys again and again. Please just indicate by way of lifting your hands if you know that you are gaining understanding into the operation of spiritual things let me see your hands that you can like a doctor look at someone's life right now hallelujah come sir can i use you come if this brother comes to us right now and he says i'm being oppressed by demons and powers of darkness i expect anyone who has been faithfully listening to these teachings and even the many thousands and millions online who are following us listen i expect that you should be able to profess solution to this brother hallelujah and that solution is not to take him to joshua selman if you if the solution is to take him to Joshua Selman, then you are not learning enough. Because the goal is not for one man to stand and become Alpha and Omega. The goal is that by the investments of the word of God in you, you are able to have the ability, the revelation, the faith, and the anointing to legislate on behalf of heaven. Hallelujah. So I expect just anybody at all to be able to walk up to this brother and say, Brother, if you are in Christ, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And although this is true, don't feel embarrassed. It doesn't mean that because you are going through what you are going through, the word of God is a lie. I am here as an ambassador to enforce that verdict in your life. Hallelujah. And then you expect the backing of heaven. If this brother comes right now and says, nothing is working in my life. 
there's no job there's no finance there's no marriage there's no open door i'm a failure all round i expect any of us to be able to sit with this brother in three days and by the revelation the strategic revelation of the word of god you should be able to bless him listen the knowledge of the word is a gift you can give people hallelujah i can count money my brother even if it is one million naira if i give you it will finish either by carelessness or fruitful use it will still finish are you getting my point now but if i deposit in you notice my choice of words the strategic word of god not just the word of god by his stripes no not by his stripes um tight give be blessed and so on and so forth that is not strategic you don't teach people that way that's information hallelujah teaching means to bring you into the understanding of the operation of kingdom principles that's what it means to understand when you understand the thing you can explain it if it is still vague you only know it you don't understand it the proof that you understand a truth in the kingdom is that you can teach it confidently hallelujah bless you sir Tonight, I'm sharing very briefly and then we'll pray on a message I titled Koinonia, Ancient Secrets to Power and Relevance. Koinonia, and then colon, Ancient Secrets to Power and Relevance. Please listen to this message tonight. I truly believe it's very powerful and it will change our lives. His grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. It's grace, your grace, shines on me. It's your grace, your grace, Lord, I'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me listen you know why i took this song you know how confident i am about life you cannot imagine it's not arrogance ah look see when you see me teach these truths the bible says i found your word and i did eat them and they became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul if i buy shares for you you may be happy and you may feel secured right if i connect you to a rich man you may be happy and feel secured if i connect you to an anointed man you may feel happy and secure but brothers and sisters when you are connected to the revelation of the truths of the kingdom is the ultimate secret for confidence in life absolutely absolutely it's it's like it's like beer that intoxicates until it has become true in your life you may not understand this is why Paul even had to correct himself. He said, we make our boasting, but then he said in the Lord, so that you will not be misunderstood. The word of God gives you such a level of confidence. All of a sudden, when you understand the principles of the kingdom, you will now begin to connect the equations of life. You will now find out that as haphazard as life looks, there is a formula that governs its operation. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will just know that nothing just happens. There is a formula. Listen, when you find it, you have found it. It may, it may cost you to find it. But brothers and sisters, when you find it, it's an asset. You don't need to refrigerate it. I keep saying it. You don't need to keep it with another untrusted person. It's yours. And it's yours for life. Hallelujah. Receive the word. 
receive the word receive the word it's your way out of mediocrity in life it's your way out of irrelevance i don't know what you may be going through right now and i don't care how bad things are in your life i'm telling you the truth brothers and sisters if you receive the word of the kingdom the strategic understanding of the operation of the kingdom you are a champion and no power in existence can stop it it's not about prophecy it's not just about laying on of hands it's about coming to a point where you are built by knowledge so when you look at life the thing that makes others panic it no longer makes you panic because you understand the hidden operation of these realities many people just wait for the physical consequences of whatever happens in the spirit and then they try to manage it when it appears physically that's a risky way of living hallelujah the bible says they that know their god daniel eleven thirty two, 32 the b part he said they shall be strong and in this life they will do exploits there are some of us here who are ministers of the gospel and we are trusting god to stamp his hand upon our lives i'm telling you this is the way it works there are some of us who are great leaders, corporate leaders, great people in different areas of our lives. There are some of us who have come on behalf of ourselves and the numerous confused people that we have in our lineage. And we know that we are the saviors. If we miss it, there might not be a door of opportunity. But I have good news for you. They said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? The word of God has equal value to any man. There's no tribalism about the word of God. I hate tribalism. You would have noticed that. I hate tribalism of any sort. Because the word of God places us in the same position. Your only limitation is your degree of persistence and your degree of passion to spiritual things. What the word of God will do to a Hausa man, it will do to a Yoruba man. What the word of God would do to an evil person, it would do to a south-south person. What the word of God would do to an illiterate, it will do to a professor. The word of God has equal value. If it is received, believed, and acted upon. This for me is the ultimate representation of God's justice. That God is a just man, truly. Because if the word of God had a way of becoming an advantage unto others by default, then would have said, God, God is playing injustice somewhere. That means the word of God gives me the same opportunity. The same opportunity. The same opportunity. And through the months, the last two, three months, we've been talking about several things. I am very proud of the fact that a majority of the people in this meeting are young people. I'm very proud of it. Years ago, let me tell you something. Years ago, when God started with us and we started this great thing that we see today, a lot of people felt it's just young people. But they have forgotten that the man celebrating 50 years today was once a young man who was misled with wrong information and he he confused himself to old age and so for me a man of god said the lord told him something he said give me the youth and i will give you a new nation some of our parents are too old to effect change they will only leverage on our own transformation are you getting what i'm saying Some of you are in children ministry and when you are talking to the children you just look at them little children hello wake up and see those who were i still remember very vividly when i was very very small if you have forgotten you are really old hallelujah i remember i remember a few commitments that i made in my life to seek god i have no regret because I always say this young people have time but they lack knowledge they are inexperienced they are naive old people 
don't have time but they have learned the lesson through pain but there's no time to correct it so we have the advantage of knowledge and time and I will get all the knowledge and do great things for the kingdom hallelujah isn't it amazing that some of the truths we are hearing a number of people here are married but most of us many of us here are not married is it not a great blessing to know that your children will not are you one day and say goodness what sort of father are you or what sort of mother are you are you not happy that your generation will look at you and say we were blessed to have you hallelujah i give god all the glory i treasure this ministry i treasure that which god is doing it is an opportunity to transform lives i said this thing about five six years ago that we are all going to be great and the great parties will all know one another yes we we'll remember one another do not underestimate what the holy ghost is doing in the lives of people this is a renaissance it's a revolution it's like the foxes that samson set on fire and just sent them there are some of you sitting down here even you you do not know how mighty who knows maybe there are wives of presidents in this place what is wrong with that i love that lady she lifted her hands and said hallelujah in other words i'm not sitting in the presence of god for nothing there are multi billionaire conglomerate owners who are spirit filled see that an apostolic not just wild people advancing hell they understand strategic kingdom advancement there are men and women of god who carry anointing indeed there will be very little competition when we start manifesting because great will be the grace upon us there will not be need for envying people we will celebrate one another because we have become colleagues in victory so i can be invited for a meeting i may, I may not be able to go i'll say sir please go for me and i know that Christ will be glorified. It's not about one great MOG. That's why we are pressing. The earth will see wonders. Ah, Every man, before he was used of God, he believed he was nothing. But not when God stretches his hands upon you. He will make a wonder. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing. I treasure and I appreciate what God is doing in my life and I'm encouraging you do not trivialize what God is doing in your life not everybody is as yielded as you are I hope you know that this is Friday night there are many disco halls that are open what's the time is the right time when everything is open and trust me there are some people sowing to the flesh making generous investments unto death but you are here building your spirit there is the justice system of God. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever, not a preacher, a man sows. Brothers, you are standing now, but you are already sowing for your children. School fees will be paid. You are not even aware when it was paid. That's how blessed it can be. Because you will bless people, your child will become a millionaire at age five. Not because you did anything. It's a privilege. They will make all your children head boy, head girl. It's not head boy anything. It's just to bring the favor of God to the school. I can imagine how my children will be. You know, I think about this thing. Let me tell you something very humorous. A lady during my birthday, she's here. She bought me baby shoes as birthday gift. And I said, goodness. That's, that's for another day, that's for another day, that's for another day. Do you believe in what God is doing in your life? Yeah. That you will end certain cycles. A day will come, your name will become a password to favor for people. That when, when there are barriers and there's nothing to do, they don't need to start shouting Jesus foolish. They say, I know this gentleman see you know him are you sure please ah. may it happen oh god may it happen may it happen may it happen 
Yes, it will happen. So let people laugh at you, no problem. Let them criticize you, no problem. Pay the price now. Sisters, I can guarantee you, you are going to marry very good men. It's a guarantee. You like, don't say amen. I can guarantee you. Don't you think, forget the fact that these brothers are wearing sandals and their jeans are faded. What is in them? He said, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is being renewed. You hold on. They may not have, forget about all these men that come with jeeps. You have already seen their future. You don't know the future of these ones. Those of you who are gullible, following every man, calm down. You will see the rising when you see the son of man in power and glory. You will remember. Brothers, take your gari honorably. Give Jesus praise. Because you're already counting days. And same for the brothers. I guarantee that you will marry virtuous ladies. Yes. See, the Bible says, he that finds a wife. A, a wife is not the name of a lady. A wife is, is, is a... Is a is, is, is a personal it's not a personality it's a what do I call it it's an office you must be a wife before you become found it's a he that finds a wife not he who's finding makes her a wife that, that's for another <laughs> ah some of you are happy you wish I would just continue you like this love and relationship thing We're taking over the mountains. Yes, we are. We are. We are. Say after me, I'm great. I'm great. Please say it with revelation. I am great. This is not just, it's not just those childish confession. I am great. I'm really great. Say I'm influential. Thank you, Jesus. Koinonia, ancient secrets to power and relevance. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Write this word down. The teaching has begun, please. Make sure you have something right. You just shouted, I'm great, I'm great. Please write all your phones. If you don't have, don't feel bad. Don't be under pressure. But next time, please get a notebook. Not just a jotter that you bring out from the back of your pocket. Have a very good hardcover note. See this? This means a lot of things about you. It means I am responsible. I mean business about my life. I'm not a joker and I'm going somewhere. When you get a good hardcover notebook, when you slip pieces of paper and with broken virus that are all stained, it tells me the quality of your appreciation for your future. Write this word down. Uncommon. <sighs> Help us, Holy Spirit sharing something very spiritual and I trust that the power of God will back up the things that we're teaching tonight. Write that word down, uncommon, because this is what you are becoming. The word uncommon means to be needed. It means to be needed. It means to be in high demand. To be in high demand. It means to be significant. Are you writing please? It means, I like this one, not easily replaceable. To be uncommon means that you are not easily replaceable. It means worthy of honor. To be uncommon means that you are worthy of honor it means you are an endangered species it means you are scarce you are highly prized i'm just talking hallelujah the revelation of the word of god is making us uncommon uncommon means you do not find it anywhere uncommon means you don't pick it on the ground gold is a treasured metal because you have to dig the earth to find it. No one treasures sand so much because you can bend down and just pick it up. So God is making us uncommon. Pray in one minute before I start teaching. Say, Lord, you are making me uncommon. I receive of that ministry. 
I receive of that ministry. Pray, you're making me uncommon. I'm becoming uncommon. I'm a joy to my family, to all those around me. Bless be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word koinonia, please write it down. The word koinonia means there are actually seven meanings. It's a Greek word from the text that we just took. The word koinonia. It has seven meanings, but I'll just focus on three of them. Number one, it means communion. The coming together of two people. It means intimacy. A state of closeness that brings about oneness. Intimacy. And number three, it means partnership or joint participation. Partnership or joint participation. I have discovered in my life and I have studied from scripture that this word koinonia enshrined in this word is the revelation that holds the key to true power, true anointing. Many of us, when you see a man that is mightily being used by God, we say this man is anointed or this is a powerful man of God or this man is full of grace, you know, and so on and so forth. To mean that there is a rich deposit of the ability of the Holy Spirit in that man's life. And tonight I want to show you the secret because there is a secret. I call it an ancient secret. An ancient secret that is responsible for power genuine authentic power the ancient secret that is responsible for timeless relevance relevance that cuts across dispensations relevant that cuts across age and geographic barriers koinonia that word Every man in scripture, we, we see when, when you read from Genesis down to Revelation, you see that God used all sorts of people. He used Tamaras, he used thieves, doubting people, temperous people, educated people, illiterate people. So there were all kinds of people with their personality differences and temperaments. But one thing happened to them all. They had encounters. And they came into this mystery called koinonia and that was the secret of the rich deposit of the spirit in their lives and it made them relevant through the dispensation of their generations and some of them were even referred to in dispensations that were not their own for instance abraham we make reference to him transgenerational relevance koinonia everybody say koinonia there is a state of intimacy and fellowship that you have with the holy spirit that will translate into the anointing of the spirit working in your life and tonight i'm going to guide us very briefly into it and then we'll pray there is something that you can know you know through the past months we've been exploring the concept of relevance success impact and all of that because it is very important it's not only enough for us to explore prayer spiritual things the gifts of the spirit you know and so on and so forth it, many of us will be consoled our christian experience will comfort us when we begin to learn the principles that make us relevant hallelujah koinonia that secret that the ancient knew right now we teach all kinds of formulas and i love principles we teach methods of getting the anointing I've, I've read a lot of books especially in recent times there are all kinds of books and all kinds of things that attempt to teach people on the anointing and i'm telling you unfortunately 
many of these people that write these books have not demonstrated the reality of the anointing in their lives and so they have written theological dissertations about the anointing and the workings of the anointing and the way it translates into making a man relevant and many people have applied these principles right now we 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 think the anointing is something or the power of the holy spirit is just a formula do a do b and then automatically it will happen no no you are dealing with somebody you are dealing with a personality you are not dealing with an animal you're not dealing with an object you're not dealing with a machine you are dealing with a real person who has emotions a real person who has a who can you can have fellowship with and if you do not understand koinonia then you may never taste kingdom relevance in your lifetime hallelujah fellowship the fellowship of the spirit here paul begins to speak in in second corinthians he said the grace of our lord jesus christ that grace is also the love of god and it says the fellowship of the spirit the fellowship the constant coming together the joint participation between you and the spirit let it remain with you i hope you know that the corinthian church were a powerful church it was it was in first corinthians 12 down to 14 that paul began to talk to the corinthian church because they were walking mightily in the gifts of the spirit they were moving in spiritual things paul even had to talk to them and in first corinthians 14 verse 40 he said let all things be done decently and in order he had to come in and bring order because the demonstration of the spirit upon their life was so rich it was creating chaos and the secret he encourages them to keep doing what they had been doing that brought the glory and the power of god and he said the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship do not ignore fellowship with the holy spirit he was telling them make sure that you do not get too busy in life and in ministry make sure you do not become so much of a a a minister a preacher a celebrity that you forget the fellowship of the spirit because your relevance is tied to it this is what paul was trying to let the corinthian church know that the fellowship of the spirit be let it remain let it not become an occasional thing because the church was getting famous they were doing great things they were getting busy just like many of us are becoming busy let me tell you something with people when they start out with god because there are no invitations permit my bias i'm talking about ministers but it applies to every area of our lives as a minister when you're starting out no one knows you there's no ministry there's no invitation no grace speaking so it is easy to stay in the place of fellowship and i'll share a few components of that you know you stay you experience that koinonia you can dedicate a whole day a whole week but then something happens when you start becoming busy there are all kinds of ministrations here and there you have invitations and you have to even select which one to go and which one not to go at that point the the grace and the impetus to continue koinonia is affected because right now there is nothing to lose even if you stay for one month and you don't read anything there are tapes that have recorded the workings of god in your life and those tapes will open doors of ministration when you stand there will always be something to share and god cannot deny himself so you will still see the grace of god here and there in your meeting and then many people become stunted and many people even lose relevance i preach the message and you can get the teaching the secret of sustained glory i think it's a preparatory message to what i'm sharing tonight and if you don't have it you can get it from the media it's free the secret of sustained glory the secret of transgenerational relevance i don't want to be a man of god who will be relevant for four or five months and then one day they'll say ah i remember we used to know this guy oh he loved god i don't know what happened but it has happened there are so many people like that in this country there are men who were relevant in certain seasons 
they carried the banner of spiritual things they pioneered certain great things but right now their voices are silent i want to tell you something when you lose the fellowship of the spirit you have lost the place of spiritual power and you have lost the place of relevance when you lose koinonia when this word becomes foreign in your life and through your your words you cannot mention that word frequently again i'm assuring you you have lost spiritual Everybody say koinonia. Say fellowship. That fellowship of the spirit. The psalmist understood this. And he said, cast me not away from your presence. He said, take not your spirit from me. It was the Holy Ghost that took me. It was koinonia that took me from a shepherd boy to become a king over the nation of Israel. And he said, oh Lord, cast me not it's because of the presence of the holy spirit and this participation is because of my joint partnership that i've written so many songs i've written so many hymns that i am considered to be a great king because of one that works together with me and he says oh lord cast me not away let nothing happen in my life and in executing my work that makes you cast me from your presence because at that point i will begin to lose relevance hallelujah this happened to his son called solomon solomon theologically speaking wrote the book of ecclesiastes in his fallen state hallelujah that's why he wrote all sorts of things vanity upon vanity he was angry all his vanity he was communicating frustration because he had done all sorts of things the man who saw the manifest presence of god twice it was solomon who prayed at the dedication of the temple he said now arise so god and come to your resting place it was solomon now solomon had lost the place of koinonia and he began to lose relevance and he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes advising people and communicating his frustration. He said, I gave myself to everything. Everything my eyes saw that I wanted, I got. No restraint. Because you see, the place of intimacy is the place of pruning. It's where God creates boundaries in your life. It's where God builds you. And as you're moving, prosperity, influence gives you options. It enlarges your coast. And it takes you returning to the spirit so that he will set boundaries. Otherwise, you will break boundaries until you lose relevance. Hallelujah. It is the absence of koinonia, listen to me, that can make a man of God begin to walk and live very well and do great things. And when he finds out that God has blessed him with a large congregation made up of all kinds of pretty ladies, lack of koinonia, a visitation and a sustaining um, remaining in the secret place that can make him compromise on the secrets and the principles that sustain the anointing until there are all kinds of of trouble in his life all sorts of things here and there disturbing a man of god's wife sleeping with somebody who came for counseling i'm not castigating people the mercy of god is still there but i'm just telling us it can be prevented are you getting my point now you can you can prevent it it can be prevented sorry you don't have to wait until you pass through it and then try to manage it. There's a great man of God. I honor the man so much. He has a television ministry. He was a great evangelist, mighty evangelist. Then, if there was a little scandal, not now that a man of God can even come on stage and say, I'm gay, and then nothing happens. Congregation doesn't change. Then, no matter how little the scandal was, you've lost your ministry. A great man of God by the name Jimmy Swaggart. This man did mighty things. He was in the class of Benny Hinn and Reinhard Bonke and all these men of God. Mighty man. But just a little scandal. Just dropped him down. And he's risen back today. He's doing great things. But he may never be like before again. Hallelujah. A man of God who starts in the secret and now becomes and all that he's obsessed about is cars 
he, he can sit down browsing all through the night all sorts of cars because it's just to make the order and in six weeks he's, he's in his garage lost without restraint everybody say koinonia the secret of true spiritual power i'm teaching us this because it is important that we become relevant what are the components of true fellowship with the holy spirit what must happen in your life for us to really say you're fellowshipping with the holy spirit what does it entail koinonia is not just a vague thing it's, it's something that is is you can describe the activities that happen in that secret place number one or before we even talk about them let me just tell you something if you want to enjoy intimacy with the holy spirit the first thing is that you must recognize and respect his ministry in your life you must respect his relevance in your life this is very important very very important i can never be close to you if you do not communicate to me that i am needed in your life is that true how many of you have found yourself restraining yourself from certain people and friends because they act every time you are around as though you are a you are a what you are a pest is that true have you seen people like that even when there is fire falling on their head you say let it fall the last time i went there they treated me like a dog can i tell you something the holy spirit is god make sure you write it the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not the first man the holy spirit is god in all the fullness so you must be able to respect and be prepared to receive his ministry i learned that from benny Hinn. till today when benny Hinn stands upon his crusade stage with hundreds and of thousands of people and millions of people he gives acknowledgement you know what it means to acknowledge a man go for occasions and you find out that if there are dignitaries seated around they don't start the occasion proper until you acknowledge them in our midst here is so 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 and so and then they say a little bit about the man he was able to do this and while they are doing that the man is excited he's happy and there are ushers already standing close to him say ladies and gentlemen please make welcome this and that and his lovely wife and two of them try to pretend i don't want to go and they say please sir we must we love you too much this seat was made for you and you are acknowledging them and the amount the man did not plan to give he will give it because he was acknowledged the bible says in all your ways acknowledge it didn't say talk to him many of us talk to god but we don't acknowledge him hallelujah do you respect the holy spirit or do you just believe in him i respect his ministry there is an invisible person brothers and sisters that stands close to me take that person away from me two weeks two weeks joshua selman is dead people will keep asking what happened maybe he has gone to babala or maybe the charm was not renewed everything has backfired the presence of the spirit i'm not embarrassed listen and let me use this to teach you the secret of friendship for many of you everybody you come close to runs away from you let me tell you what is wrong now it's not necessarily demon it's because your life creates a picture that trivializes the importance of people in your life the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly if i come to your room and you are frowning because you want to put food and i'm full it's not even that i want to eat but the way you are frowning you are creating a body language that tells me you self now nah, for you you know you think i'll come there again but when i come and you celebrate me you show genuinely from your heart that if i were to come hundred times you will still receive me a time will come when i will make my habitation in your house there that's what happened to the prophet remember the prophet and the shunammite woman every time he passed when the woman saw him she she made table she studied the things that he liked she put a table for him because she noticed he was always receiving from god and writing and the prophet was so amazed a time came when she even created a room for him and she was blessed do you make room for the spirit 
you get up in the morning you get up in a whole week and you don't care about him you don't talk to him and then sometimes we come for koinonia and people just tell a lot of lies you are the love of my life ha, love of your life of your life not even of your day of your life i wouldn't trade you for silver or gold i was teaching in a ministry and i said hold on do you know what silver and gold is silver and gold ha can change your life and your family i wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are you are my end. As a lady, when you are singing, your husband will just be looking at you. You are my everything. Okay. And now see the reason why you don't cook for me again. You are not faithful. Can you give the Holy Spirit your all? Can you let him know that I have no ministry without you? This is what I tell him in the secret place. I say, Lord, people love me today because you love me. If I reject you, that's the same thing that will happen. My life is a reflection of the honor I give to him. Every time I honor him, I find out that people honor me. Every time I find out that my honor for him is dwindling, I see it happen in my life and I run for a retreat quickly. Hallelujah. When you dishonor the Holy Spirit, your life will reflect that dishonor. Because the glory that keeps you honorable fades away. Hallelujah. See, I respect the Spirit of God. Yes, I do. I do. I respect Him. I honor Him. I don't just believe in Him. I've had the opportunity to preach in crusades and meetings and conferences and so many meetings. I'm week after week, I'm traveling from end to end of this nation preaching and doing mighty things for the kingdom and in every one of this meeting he has not left me without a witness how could i reject him everyone people send me text messages they say a lot of things joshua selman thank you your messages are changing lives your messages are doing this and that and in my mind i say our message holy spirit they just don't know you know that song um what's it they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what you mean to me listen if someone has volunteered to pay your school fees the day you hear the person is sick with a terminal disease what will you do you will run like your life depends on it your school fees is at stake is that true the holy spirit is the key to my relevance if people ever clap for me it's because of him so as they clap for me i only become an usher and i say holy spirit you are the one who deserves it when i stand and i speak i don't have the ability to be everywhere at the same time but as i speak he's the one who touches people his power he makes his power manifest he's the force behind the messages of this ministry that you hear and it does something to you you cannot explain how could i ignore him how could i ignore him based on what what you see in my life is a reflection of his glory if you ignore the holy spirit you have ignored beauty and glory from your life if you have ignored the holy spirit listen god is speaking to us here we started last week many of us have truly ignored the ministry of the holy spirit koinonia many of us have become so busy you have become a business mogul now you have partners in abuja and and lagos and abroad and china you are now a great man you are now a five pointer you nail it at will there's no need for the holy spirit again you are now married no need for crying or dropping any prayer request for life partner and there's no reason to seek him again we must get to that point where we create a secret place every time i listen to mike mudok he takes time
to honor the Holy Spirit. And he does it generously from the depths of his heart. Ladies, imagine how your husband will feel when you come up and before you preach, you take 10 quality minutes and you just shower honor. Say, I'm a queen because he's a king. Why? I'm married because he married me. Ah! The man is there managing all of the blessings that are coming. As soon as you finish, that car that you wanted to buy, you say, um, honey, what did you even say you wanted? Listen, many, um, I see, it looks like I'm using everyday joke, but I'm telling you, this is the secret. And can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? The reason why many people are disgraced in public is because they embarrass the Holy Spirit in secret. If you honor him in secret, he will never forget you in public. Many people come on stage. The power of God is going to move. I came all the way to let you see what God will do. And we chorus all sorts of things and get angry at the people. You don't have faith. Open now, receive. What we are meaning is, try, you know, all sorts of things. We lay hands on people, twisting their head up and down. And they say, ah, let me just fall. This man will kill me. Brothers and sisters, the absence of intimacy is always clear. You can't fake it. Hallelujah. Every time hold this mic, you hear the voice of two people. It's just that it has been woven into one. That's the reason why I can be talking to you outside. You see that? Generally. But once it is time to come into that office, that releases our oneness you will hear another voice hmm. so every time you come to touch me you are touching two people joshua selman is a man but there is the holy spirit standing behind Hiya. when it's time to lay hands on the sick he tells me remember we're in the secret place remember the things that i taught you and so together we lay that hand and while my hand is there's, there's nothing to it but when his hand comes upon your hand, hi, suddenly, it, it happens as if you are playing. But then it's as real as anything. Sister, when the Holy Ghost comes upon your life, he amplifies your beauty. There is a level of beauty that people, they know there is something about you. It's not like you are the finest lady everywhere. But they are seeing the beauty that, it, that is interfacing both the physical and the spirit realm. The brother talks to you and he cannot sleep again. He knows he spoke to two people. Hallelujah. And so you greet someone and you tell the person, God bless you. And that word comes with an anointing. Because there is another personality. Say, I am never alone. Say it again, I am never alone. There is a personality that walks with me. That talks with me. See, if you carry this mindset, if you carry this mindset, it will change your life. Oh, I'm never alone. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. For you are with me. When I go for meetings and I see sick people and I see hungry people, hungry for the things of God, and I see stubborn people, there are people that when you see in a meeting, if the Holy Ghost is not with you, start crying. Because you say in Jesus' name, they are not even answering amen. You see, you, they are as complicated as whatever. You know you are in for a surprise. It's at that time you can lean on the strength of one who is greater than you. And you know that the Holy Spirit is going to do something in their lives. And someone, sometimes when I see people who come for koinonia, you know, when I follow the, the, the pictures, you see the person who came you know that someone brought him because he's even surprised he's just standing outside and wondering and you know this person does not even know why he came the ability of the spirit have you ignored the ministry of the holy spirit in your life this has nothing to do with just ministry it has to do with every area of your life so you must respect his ministry the holy ghost is a gentleman 
The limit to which you allow him to come into your life is the limit to which he remains. Revelation 3.20. Let's hurry up. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Lord and Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Let's sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy potent Father of mercy. Thou art welcome in this place. Listen, it says, Behold, I stand. He was writing to the seven churches, they were already saved. This is not a scripture for sinners. He was writing to the seven churches in Asia Minor, but he said, Behold, I stand. Like a guy comes to propose to a lady. You can't just grab a lady and say, you are my wife. Forget about those things they used to do before. You are my wife and you... No, behold, I come and I stand. I seek intimacy. I seek intimacy. But I will not bump into your life because you have a will. You can choose to reject me and I will go. Are you getting my point now? He said, behold, I stand. As mighty as I am, I am able to change your life. But I stand. It says, and I knock. If any man hear my voice. That means you can be so distracted you do not even hear his voice. But if for any reason you hear my voice. And what? Open the door. What does it mean to open the door? Receive my ministry. Consider it that I am relevant enough. Consider it that without me you will lose relevance. Without me there's no spiritual power. Without me you will struggle. That I am able to bring beauty and glory out of your life, out of your church, out of your fellowship. Consider it that you don't need to relocate. What you need is not to come closer to the people. Jesus was on the mountain, crowds came. In the desert, crowds came. All these excuses we give, there are various ways of explaining the consequences of the absence of koinonia. If my church was in Abuja, people would have come. I know that. If I had money, I would have paid for everything. I would have done beautiful backdrop. It's a lie. It's a lie. There is a presence that draws people. It's called anakazo. It's a compelling power of the spirit. Believe what I'm telling you. No human being can resist it. No matter how stubborn you are. Listen, this is the power that created the heavens and the earth. This is the power that raised Christ from the dead. Oh no, you are too small to resist it. When the ministry of the Holy Spirit is allowed and permitted in a church, in a building, you will see supernatural things that will amaze you. The reason why things look very difficult in churches and ministries is because we have boxed the Holy Spirit. We are embarrassed to tell the people that he is greater than us. We are threatened like two business partners who have begun to fight themselves. Young Gicho wrote a book, The Secret of His Building the 700,000 City in Shur. He wrote that book. I read that book years ago. Holy Spirit, my senior partner. He wrote another book, The Fourth Dimension. There is more to this man you see. I'm not so smart in myself. Come on now. 
But there is one who can bring beauty and glory out of your life. But he's standing tonight. Listen, he's knocking. You've struggled all your life to be relevant. Man of God, you have struggled. You've told lies with miracles that didn't happen. Because of the absence of his presence. And he's saying there is no need. You can get into the real thing. You have exaggerated the number of your church members because you are embarrassed. You have said all kinds of things. Competing with people, he's saying there is no need. I can give you something authentic. Sister, you have envied everybody you can see. And the Holy Spirit is saying there's no need. There is beauty and glory. Ah, yeah. He's called the Spirit of glory. He does something to you. Do you know that the Holy Spirit can alter your physical form? Your physical, biological form. There is, there is, there is a depth. How many of you have seen a man who gets married to his wife? And after four or five years, they start looking like one another. Is that true? It even happens to some, even from relationship, before they get married, you say, ah, oh boy, when did you start becoming fair? You say, that's none of your business. Oneness, participation. How many of you have seen pastors of certain ministries look like their ministers? And you know they did not try to cook it up. Something happened. It looks like their physical appearance were altered. That's what happened to the apostles in Acts. The book of Acts, they looked like Jesus. That's what happened to Peter when they saw Peter. They said, No, Peter, your talk betrays you. It tells you, You have been Peter said, Woman, me, I've not been with Jesus, but he had been so into oneness that even when he wanted to run away, he could not. He had taken up the language, the character. Let me tell you something about oneness with the spirit. Let's see, my dear. When you become one with the Holy Spirit, see. When a spirit comes to walk with a man, the spirit begins to live out its characteristics through that man. Just like a demon spirit. Right? There was a spirit and it was the posture of that spirit, the woman who was bound for 18 years as you. When you are praying for people and you know, during deliverance sessions, you see people acting like animals and acting like snakes because the spirit that oppresses them is trying to manifest its characteristic through their faculties. So when you walk with the spirit, without struggle, that is the real revelation of grace. You start seeing the love of God at work in you. Are you seeing the point now? There are times that the Holy Spirit is grieved about certain things and you start crying physically. Because you are now, you have, there is a sharing together. He can pour into you his burden. Hallelujah. There are times that the Holy Ghost is excited. So you are praying in tongues. We talk about that. You are praying in the secret place. And the Holy Spirit sees that you have entered the realm of victory. You cannot see it. And he starts rejoicing. And you start laughing. You see now. You have not seen it. But because you are one. He starts letting you share in the victory. That's why when a sick body is healed, the Holy Ghost doesn't just appear and say, all right, stand, let me shine. Congregation, I am the one. You are the only one who is left. That is your own benefit of coming into oneness. And so people look and your face on posters and billboards and people say, this is the great man. And you, who, because you have wisdom, you run back and say, Spirit of God, I'm not foolish. We are together. It's the biggest secret that I've learned. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let everything in my life give way. If you leave me with the Holy Spirit, you have not done anything to me. Hallelujah. A great man of God, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, I've shared the story here, I'll share it again. He was praying at a particular point and a great politician came to see him. Very noble man. So when he came, one hour, the man of God was still praying. Two hours, he was just in the room. Three hours, the wife got a bit embarrassed. His daughter got a bit embarrassed and she went to knock. And then he opened the door and she entered. And she was like, Daddy, this man, Abba, attend to him, let him go. And he looked at her and said, my daughter, sit down. He said, you know why this man is here? He's here because of my relationship with the Holy Spirit if i leave my relationship with the holy spirit because of him he will never return again let him wait there are many of us as koinonia is like this 
when we see certain dignified people we cannot worship in the presence of God because we are embarrassed the one who makes the world clap for you if you run away from him now are you not foolish because they will not clap again the one who has made you a celebrity the one who took you from the wilderness some of us we know where we are coming from hallelujah look how he's brought beauty and glory out of your life i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever Lord. see my mom sent me a text my mom sent me a text that blessed me so much you know what she told me in the text um she's with her husband in lagos and they sent me a text her now she said she calls me her father so she said my father make sure you don't buy a car with tinted glasses because police people will disturb you i hope you take note of that bless you or love you or whatever it is i said ah you know what it means for a mother to be so confident that her son is a success she knows that if i'm not going to go and carry any kind of thing and manage she's advising me in advance you say buy a, don't buy a car with tinted glass that's a level of trust and confidence are you getting my point can that be your testimony can your father look at you and say son i know you will build a house for me please when you are building it can you make the kitchen a bit larger and he knows you are not going to say are you joking one plot of land no hallelujah i remember years ago someone met me and we we're talking about purpose and destiny a good friend of mine and he told me something he said sir i'm more confident about your life than i am about my own life it's not he's not in so he's just saying when i look at you i can guarantee that you will be a success even more than i can guarantee my own success and i told him change it change it there is a revelation you can have john 14 17 john 14 17 everyone say after me holy spirit I open up myself say it seriously Holy Spirit I open up myself to the fullness of your ministry to the multifaceted dimensions of your ministry he said even the spirit of truth he said the world cannot do what that means there are people who do not receive this spirit the world cannot receive him because it seeth him not neither knoweth him he said for you but you know him for he dwelleth with you and he shall be in you alos paracletos the helper when the holy ghost comes into your life he helps you there are things he does not do for you but he assists you let's rush what are the components of true fellowship number one the study of the word the study of the word these are the things you do in that secret place the components that make up true fellowship koinonia with the spirit number one the study of the word if you claim you are in intimacy with the holy spirit and you don't at least have a commitment if even if you don't have a desire you must have a commitment because there are times you may not have a desire but you must have the commitment are you getting my point mm. there are times listen there are times you may not have the desire to study just like there are times you may not have desire to go to work or go to class but you have the commitment praise god what is the relevance of studying the word it gives us an understanding of the ways of god it gives us an understanding of the ways of god the thoughts of God and the mindset of God. Hmm. We must study the word of God. Contained in this book. Listen. When you listen to my teachings or you read my books for instance. In that book is a communication of my persuasions. Is that true? 
a book is simply a documentation of persuasions when i'm persuaded about a philosophy or an idea or a pattern of thought i document it so when you study my books it is possible to begin to think like me even without seeing me because you've explored my material so much you have submitted yourself to my thinking pattern and that's what leadership is all about influencing people to come to a point where they adopt your value system by using influence and not force saddam hussein and all of these people adolf hitler they were bad leaders because they caused people to adopt their ideology by using force and cruelty but look at jesus he made his life a template of his ideology so that when we saw it, we would be able to align to it. Are you getting my point? The word of God, the, the Greek word for word there is logos. And, and it's translated thoughts, the thoughts of a man. Printed, the thoughts, the thinking pattern of a man. And Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says this. It said, let this mind let this mindset let this ideology let this frame of work this plane of judgment let it be in you which was also in christ and the word christ is christos the spirit of god hallelujah let this mind be in you that means there is a mindset everybody say mindset everybody say programming the word of god does something to you i've shared this if i if I pick, come my dear. You are a microbiology, right? Biochemistry. This is a biochemist, for instance. Watch this. Some years ago, this lady came not knowing anything about biochemistry. Is that true? But there was a curriculum, is that true? That had been created with the goal of transforming her. Did they change her body? Did they injure her? They just passed her mind to a system for a period of time and the lecturers looked at her and felt she was qualified to be awarded a degree so the word of god is his school of training you where you interact with his thinking pattern it's not a devotional to make you feel spiritual the word of god is his thought his mindset his ideology bless you my dear so all the while you've been taught all your life that if you want to be rich money doesn't grow on trees hoard as much as you can hoard cheat everybody kill if it's possible but then when you explore the mind of god the constitution that governs the operation of the kingdom you will find out that there is he that scattered and yet increases there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty now you are in conflict there are two mindsets are you getting my point now and when you submit to the word of God, you have permitted. The word let means permit. Permit this mind. Hallelujah. So culturally, you have been taught that when you envy people and fight with people, then you become the big boss. Ah! And then you come and you study that when you come into Christ, there is a new law. There is a new operation of love that works in you. Hallelujah. Everybody say the word of God reveals to me God's ideologies, God's perspective. And then it also reveals to you God's opinion about every matter. There are many opinions, brothers and sisters. The word of God reveals to you God's opinion. I'll be chipping a lot of things to bless us. Come, Shay. Listen. If I want to marry this lady now, I don't need to go and meet a devil like many of us go around scouting for everybody and they just say, just tell me. Uh -uh. The word of God. It, as a young man, you want to get married. Are you getting my point now? Culturally, you are taught, just go to the village, carry anybody that is available, save Johnny, flog it out in the marriage. Yeah, after all, you are the man. Eventually, you will survive. Two of you will be f tired of fighting and you now sit down at the round table to discuss how to move your home forward. That's a cultural way. But according to scripture, number one, you know that it's God's will for you to marry. Male and female, he created them. Not two males, not two females. Male and female. 
so it is very clear that you have god did not create a man and a will so if you find out that you are having desire for fish to marry you know that you need to run for miracle service there's something wrong but listen listen i'm teaching you how to adopt the mind of god see that if you find out you're having a desire for another man or another lady you know that you need help quick quick either a retreat or prayer anyone you need it quick now watch this i'm showing you how the mindset of god affects you right when you now go to study the I, i'm reading now as a gentleman who wants to settle down and the bible says for this cause shall a man not a boy so the first question is what makes a man I, i'm showing you how to study and meditate upon the word of god and he said shall a man leave his father and mother that means he must be independent and there are several things that bring for independent responsibility some level of financial security some level of mental stability are you seeing how i'm building on god's mindset leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife not his wife and other concubines his wife right and they too shall become what one flesh automatically it tells me that the lady i'm going to marry is not a house girl it's not a kicking machine to beat her up every time a business deal doesn't go well are you getting my point now and then i study from god's word he said children are a heritage from the lord not a product of a man and a woman they are heritage from the lord so i bend to the mindset of god whereas i'm the kind of person that claims i'm a hot guy yo i can never do this all this nonsense that we carry from different cultures and you now come i'm this in our village ladies kneel down and lie down and lick her leg in our village when ladies cook soup is in one plate food is in one plate you now submit to the word of god you either choose to carry your village to your destiny or drop it and pick up the mindset choose it this day the bible says that means you can choose are you getting my point now and i say lady when you make up your mind and say no me i'm not going to do anything no any man that i will give it to him i'm not i'm not cooking for any man i'm this and that uh, we are women i'm independent i have my own rights too then you read wives you first ask yourself am i a wife with this noise i'm making you see that because if you are not a wife he was not talking to you you can continue doing what you are doing but if you are a wife the bible says submit to your husband in everything everything it did not leave you with a choice this is the law of the kingdom and so you now bring yourself and say well talk god this is how you have made it i subscribe to your government hallelujah so if you're one who is lazy and not given to prayer and you find out the bible says luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint automatically you know that you will submit the goal of studying the word is not to give yourself head knowledge that puffs up every time you study the word find the principles of the kingdom the next thing is submit to their operations bless you man you see the reason why our study of the word does not profit us most of the time because the truth is many of us use devotionals we use books but when we study the word of god we do not submit number one many of us study and argue it when you just study you see something that stinks your ego and you just jump it say kite i don't like this this book of colossians let me let me go to something else what is my confidence what what assurance do i have that i'm submitting to a mindset that will not disappoint me he said for i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 verse 11 he said they are thoughts of good you see the word thoughts again my mindset towards you this mindset that i propose to you like a man comes to meet a lady and says look i will take care of you if you go with me in this journey forget about what you see now we are soaking gary but at the, the end is peace that's what god is doing with his word right he's bringing you a proposal and he's saying look 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 how your mindset has made your life the quality of your life so far is a product of your ideologies can you bend 
and let me propose this mindset i know this the thoughts that i think towards you they are thoughts that will bring you good thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah everybody say the study of the word when you study the word you understand the ways of god and when you understand the ways of god you will easily be able to detect error are you getting my point so when you see an operation that looks like god but does not line up with the value system and the ideologies of the kingdom although it looks spiritual you can judge it by the authority of the word are you getting my point now Number two, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come in open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words be part. I never study my Bible as if i'm doing a bible quiz or competition many of us believe in our minds we are used to competitions so when you start studying you now come and meet your friend and say i finished colossians today i was just going through it i even started Ephesians. how has it changed your life who cares who cares whether you read the book no listen don't be under pressure it is not spirituality to say i finished my bible 20 times if we cannot see the fruit in your life it's like saying, I know Jonathan. Every day you are telling us you know Jonathan. And we are still the same level. We say, oh God, you are lying somewhere. You are lying somewhere. Because we know the way even Jonathan's houseboy is. You are shouting every time. Jonathan is my, my, my father's brother. If not because of situation, I would have grown in his house. You are telling at a point in time. We we'll know that you are telling a lie. That's how it is. So every time if you speak, I'm a word addict. I'm studying the word. Yet we are not seeing your life. You are the first to get angry. You are the first to slap people. You are the first to insult people. You are the first to use words that are not cultured by the spirit. We know you have not been with God. There is an absence of koinonia. Listen. There are parameters that can measure if the word of God is growing in you. The measure of the word of God in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. Are you getting my point? He said, my little children in whom I travel until Christ be formed. So I see the degree to which you have submitted to the word of God. That is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord in your life experientially. Hallelujah. Take your time and study the word of God. Listen, you must be strategic about your studying the word of God. Every day we have devotionals to help us here. But you don't have all the time to study the word of God for eight hours every day. That's not how to grow. That's a religious way. There are many of us that put ourselves under unnecessary pressure. I don't study the word of God like that. Every day I look at, there are times I get up in the morning, there's no time for anything. I have so much activities. But I dedicate periodic times when I stay with the word of God intentionally for the purpose of discovering the gems and the treasure in the world and applying it in my life. How have you been studying your word? So that you can quote. Some of us even have some Bible memory aids that help us. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who threatened me. Uh, this and that and that. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Jeremiah chapter this and that. Da, 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 da. And people say, whoa, whoa, your life is not changing. You are quoting dangerous scriptural principles that have changed the lives of ancient men. But because this thing was not done for the purpose of intimacy, it was simply done to find relevance outside of the spirit. I'm not against Bible recitation. If you stay with a man so much, you should be able to know his words. Your word have I hidden in my heart. The Bible says that I may not sin against you. How shall a young man keep his way pure? Not by trying to run away from iniquity. He said, but by meditating. By meditating. By meditating. 
So my value systems change. Hallelujah. Number two, the components that make for true intimacy, true fellowship. Number two is a life of praise and worship. Praise and worship. What does praise and worship do? It creates the atmosphere for the Spirit of God to manifest Himself and to commune with you. The Holy Ghost does not show up everywhere. His manifest presence, His omnipresence, the ability to be everywhere is there. Where can I hide from your presence? The psalm says. But His manifest, His revealed presence, that He reveals Himself for the purpose of communion, it doesn't happen everywhere. Look at me. Have you seen two people in a relationship? When it's evening and they want to really sit down and talk. Does the guy just look and tell the lady to sit down? And then him too, he just sits down in the middle of a junction. How was your day? What do you think the lady would do? Ah, the lady will say, this is a picture of many things to come. I'm plotting this graph and it's not heading up to your tent, O ye Israel. You see that? There is always a preparation. Because this guy loves this lady or he's trying to win her heart. He would dress the place. He would arrange it. If she likes red flowers, somebody that you know has no business with red will go out of his way. Buy red, buy anything that looks like red. It may be even the ox blood. To him is red. At least he tried. He will bring it and arrange something. And says, I did this for you. I prepared this place. This is your own place. Sit down. Many of us do not know that there is a geography where God meets with men. You can set up an altar, a meeting place. Solomon dedicated a place in the temple and he said, Oh Lord, let this be your resting place. Wherever people are, if they turn to Jerusalem and pray, hearken to them. Hallelujah. You can make your house or your room an altar. There are people here in this church building you see them in the night they come some of them pray there are some of us our rooms there are some of us certain places some toilets some garages it doesn't matter where people just lock themselves somewhere and just say lord i have come to fellowship and you just sing songs of worship i love you lord and i lift my hands that's fellowship koinonia to worship you and you're luring him with your worship because he cannot resist worship oh my soul rejoice take joy my king and your phone is ringing and you leave it there it's the guy that says you should send your bank account and you leave it there in what you hear the devil is saying, keep singing. You will finish singing and eat your fingers. Let it be a sweet. And he's watching. He's watching. He's seeing the way other things do not mean nothing in his presence. Priority. Sister, you are just singing, I love you, Lord. And Prince Charming is flashing. Ha! Your body. Abel wants to worship. Cain is saying, you better call now that things are working for you. You have been praying and submitting prayer requests. This guy is already being nice now. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Anything you love above the secret place is an idol. I don't care what it is. Abraham took his son son i love you but before you came i was in love with another and not your presence will kill that love he dropped that boy and lifted the knife the reason why many of us may never encounter certain dimensions of glorious things is because god tested you with that thing and his presence and you gave up his presence for it is the same thing as trading your birthright for a pot of soup soup that you eat and three hours later you are hungry Hallelujah. When I'm spending time with God, let the whole world catch fire. Let it catch fire. It's amazing how the devil can create 
so much distractions there are some of us who when we come to the presence of god that's the time to ping you just see a lady's hair say that's the hair i've been talking to you about let me snap it quickly and you become a commentator on whatsapp and what they call it all those things and the devil knows when to disturb you he waits until it's time for the presence it's time for you to fellowship with the spirit he now brings up all sorts of things Psalm 100 verse 2 says come before him with singing that is the protocol of his presence sing to the spirit many of you don't sing every man that moves in the anointing is a man of worship it's a secret of the anointing that's why you see us take our time that's why you see these people standing you don't want to imagine the sacrifice that they spend i'm on stage and they're on stage with me even if it's for 10 hours and the keyboard is playing why because he's worshiping we are creating the atmosphere he said i will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp the prophet knew this and so he said bring me a mistrial i need i cannot talk i need to bring because the holy spirit was not resident in them he would come and he said there is a technology in the spirit that invokes his presence that's what we do during our traditional festivals you see some people who just tie some things around and they come and they are dancing and singing for hours like fools and when the spirit they are calling finally arrives you will know it has arrived confusion accidents all sorts of things registering his presence i'm here you ask for it in india many of you have watched them they blow flutes and they sing and those serpents begin to come out and people come to watch music is a law of spiritual operation it's not just a principle that's why when you listen to all these classical musics orchestras you know and and all this contemporary worship they do something to your spirit I have a bad voice so what you are not presenting a special number it's called the secret place even if you are not called into the ministry of worship god is not complaining he loves it the way it is sing any song compose your own song hallelujah have you seen a lady in love and the guy said i want to sing for you because his friend said that's what i did and the guy is not a good musician he doesn't even know that the key he's taking is not even the key of the right song. He's mixing words. He's just singing all sorts of songs. And because the lady loves, she's saying, wow, you mean you learned this song today? And the guy is saying, you cannot imagine the days of rehearsal. And he's making all sorts of mistakes. Listen, I'm showing you something about some of you. It has happened to you. That's why you are laughing. You are seeing how this guy is doing his best. He's even closing his eyes. He's communicating his passion. On a very good day, you'd have gotten up to work, but you appreciate that's how the Holy Ghost is. He's not complaining. He's not complaining. We can tell you here that your voice is not good, but when you're in the sea, go off key, go up, go down, sing bass, sing anything. It's you and him. It's called koinonia. There are not many people invited. He, not them that dwell in the secret. The secret place is not a congregation. It's a place where you meet. It's a love affair. It's an intercourse. It's called koinonia. Dance with me. Remember our song? Lover of my soul To the song of all songs this is to the Holy Spirit. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul? To the song of all songs. Let's sing one more time. I'm making you fall in love with him. Dance with me, oh of my soul to the song of all songs 
listen 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 and while you are singing this song suddenly his shekinah fills the room you know he's in that place i mean your whole body is shaking this guy is responding your your love song is attracting him and you're just shaking and you're wondering scriptures are just coming in your mind and as that is happening god is talking to people bless him bless her favor him all that is happening in the secret place there are sicknesses and challenges there are burdens that you have and you take to the secret place and you're saying oh lord about this cgpa i just saw my cgpa five carryovers and he gives you a song to sing for him because when you sing it brings him and that song begins to comfort you whereas you were crying about something after meeting with him you wipe your tears and you get up and walk like a king you have a challenge in your life you're struggling with a habit you're struggling with something and you go to his presence and you begin to sing and say lord something else is taking your place in my life and i'm reporting to you i'm a faithful bride i'm reporting to you that pornography wants to steal your place in my life i'm reporting to you that pride in ministry is taking your place and as a jealous god like a man who is fighting for his bride he will come and say let me see that devil that stands would you dance with me, oh, lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? Listen, there is not there are people when you tell secrets about your life, you are in trouble. It's as you would have just gone to NTA and announce to the whole world because they will tell everybody they are just, don't tell anybody. Else. The next person who tells is that be say, I did I don't know you. If anything happens, I've never met you. But the Holy Ghost is the only one who can listen to everything about you and still not complain. I don't know one man who has been with his wife and they've never had reason. The Holy Spirit will never quarrel you. You come with your weaknesses broken. You come with all sorts of things. When men reject you, when that guy says you're good for nothing, you refuse to sleep with me, go. You come coming back to the secret place. That's the place of strength. Men of God who do not have the secret place, when persecution starts, and now, see, the, the apostolic ministry comes with heavy persecution. If you are not a man of the secret place, you will never last men will question the source of your anointing men will question the reason why crowds are gathered like this men will question all kinds of things when men shout and people oh you think it's everybody that sends me nice text messages i wish so i wish so when i get all those things i look forward to my hour of prayer and i just go into his presence and i lie down flat the one who can love me the way i am men will tell you you are looking too fat you are looking too slim the holy spirit says you are okay just stay there you are okay i don't need any shedding weight i don't need your hair is not rough you are okay come on now ladies you have given your heart to a man of inferior value why not come to this spirit you gave your whole life to a man you were sure that you are not the only one in his life but this is one who has pledged commitment with you forever You never know what true love is until you meet the holy spirit when you meet the holy spirit you start searching for a man that can give you the same effect in your secret place and if you don't find it you don't say yes to him so when one brother comes because he likes you he now wears suit and comes for koinonia when he's talking to you you are looking for that spiritual effect that cannot be faked and you say my brother you talk like you're a christian but i don't see that signature meaning you are not a man of the secret place hallelujah worship do you do you spend time i'm telling you when i'm in the presence of god i'm not apostle joshua selman i throw away all of those things and i roll before him and i cry like a baby and this is how i prepare for meetings brothers and sisters this is how i prepare for meetings 
I talked to the Lord and I said, Lord, Friday is miracle service and so many people are coming right now and I cannot help them. I'm, I'm but a young man. There are so many expectations on me and I hear the Spirit of God telling me, don't worry, we'll go together. We'll do this. That's why when I sit down in my mind, I'm saying, okay, Holy Spirit, worship team is now ministering. We're ready to go and I can just feel him saying, go, go, go and do it. Prove to the people that you are not alone. Ah! and as he left me not once many guys will run away from you when the going gets tough is that true i remember a guy who was making noise about a lady i will marry her he found out that she had a problem with bedwetting and it was a demonic problem the lady was a very responsible and godly lady it's just that it had been there for a while when he found out ah the brother said you know guys i'm busy oh, please don't disturb me i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy and the day this lady came and she cried to me and it pained me because I know the brother. I said, such a virtuous lady. So you are already trying to, you've not gotten married, but there is something about her life you are not proud of and you are now running away. That's the same thing you will do when you get married. But the Holy Ghost, he will give you a garment, you go and stain it outside. When you come, you see him holding soap, already waiting for you. While you are trying to explain, he says, there's no need. That you came into my presence is a sign that you are not a rebel. To the song of all song. Can we sing this song just once as I prepare to round up? Would you dance with me, your lover of my soul? To the song of all You dance with me, your lover of my soul. To the song of all songs. Just the voices, just one more time. From the depths of your heart. Would you dance with me, your lover? my soul to the song of all songs the third component of intimacy with the holy ghost is prayer the first is the study of the word the second is the ministry of heartfelt praise and worship god blesses you by a keyboard god blesses you by a guitar are you getting my point even if it's only one key learn it cfg and the minor just sit down and lie down that's all you know you are not learning it to sing somewhere one day people will come and listen to you i remember when years ago when i used to be we were three myself steve strings and andy now called ambassage is a gospel musician three of us were roommates then in downfordio and we would worship goodness i was like a madman sometimes i would lie down and they used to keep the keyboard of winners campus fellowship then then steve was the vice president of winners campus fellowship so they used to keep the equipment in our room praise god and i'll just get on the keyboard and steve would just take the guitar and you know his fingers those those anointed fingers goodness and steve will begin to play and while we're just playing the glory of god one night something happened i'll never forget myself andy and steve we were just singing and worshiping for hours and then we held three of our hands and brothers and sisters i tell you the truth we could not lift our hands god came into that room when you see a man of the secret is ever looking young it's not about eating well he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither you see a man of 60 years 65 years looking as if there is a supernatural ability working because there truly is if it's a life-giving spirit and you stay with a life-giving spirit for so long something happens to you do you believe me absolutely prayers especially praying in the spirit Praying in the spirit is a mystery that initiates and sustains true communion. 
Many of us come from circles where the subject of praying in tongues has been challenged. I came from an orthodox background and I understand what it means. I went to a, a seminary and I, I have touched different orthodox circles. So I understand the way Pentecostals taught it was a terrible way. Nobody would... They, 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 and, and then all of the rascality and madness that happened around praying in tongues made it look as though when the Holy Spirit came upon people, he made them idiots. They did not teach us that tongues was a mystery it was a language of heaven that was supposed to enforce communion it's a secret code of communication we were not taught like that i'll never forget the day they were going to pray for us to be filled with the holy ghost i didn't understand anything the man was teaching i was feeling like sleeping the only thing i know is he called two people and he told one to run on one leg and the other one ran on two legs and he said that's it praying in understanding tongues that's all i remember and then we sang one song hallelujah jehovah reigns hallelujah jehovah reigns hallelujah jehovah reigns Give him the glory that he deserves. That's all. And then we got filled with the Holy Ghost. When I started praying in tongues, I was wondering. I said, ah, oh God, I hope I'm not just joining everybody and lying. Maybe they received the real thing. Because some people were falling me. I didn't fall. Nothing happened. But I was praying at least. I doubted that thing for days. But I began to see transformation in my life. In JS2, I was made the timekeeper of the whole school. There was a grace in my life that I could not explain. JS2, very small boy, quarter to five, every day the Holy Ghost would wake me, physically. Someone would tap me, quarter to five, quarter to five. We had a matron called Miss Rhoda, wonderful woman, she's gone to be with the Lord now. One day, when I woke up, five on the dot, I would ring the bell. She called me and laid hands, she said, you're an exceptional person. I would study just once i'm serious and never have to read again once it was supernatural then we started one one prayer evening meeting called operation catacruz <laughs> we were tired of the nonsense that was happening around so we myself and five guys we were like the apostles of the school five of us very small we did wonderful things wonderful things one of them was a sickler he was like our peter and all through that time that that devil of infirmity left oh we did mighty things i prayed for people who were stammerers and all of a sudden the stammer the stammering will leave i for us it was not a big deal because nobody taught us that this thing was great you need honorarium you're a great man no we just did our thing and then at a point they now started bringing a lot of priests and they were teaching they brought a lot of people they thought and we knew it was us they were talking to and then eventually we threw away all these things of god it was something in my spirit and when we threw away all those things it was in less than two months our leader died i was with him the final moment in the hospital his ribs were swollen that sickness came back what he was delivered from they were born triplets one died there's only one who is alive now and i looked at him in the hospital I told him, don't worry, you'll be fine. Little did I know that that would be the last time because we ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I cried one day, many years, when I realized that that was the reason. We left him. We actually asked him to walk out of our lives. Take your place. Take your place. I will never ask you to walk out of my life. Take your place, take your place. That gentleman died. Most of the great prayer warriors who were doing great things, I tell you, many of them today, some of them are drunkards, some of them are whatever because they preach to us that forget the, you know, the Holy Spirit, blah, 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 blah. Some of you right now, you are at the verge of throwing away. The only thing you have not thrown is praying in tongues. You've thrown every other thing. Prayers. 
prayer opens us up to sensitivity it opens us up through sensitivity sorry to the promptings and the impulses of the spirit the ministry of prayer opens us up makes us sensitive you can get more of that on my teaching spiritual perception opens your organs of interacting with spiritual things and then you begin to move in certain operations of the spirit the word of knowledge the knowing of the spirit the witness of the spirit all of these things are activated in the place of prayer prayer empowers us to hear his voice the bible says while they prayed while they prayed the holy ghost spoke to them not while they sat down while they prayed the holy ghost spoke to them he said separate me paul and barnabas while they prayed let's hurry up number four corporate fellowship with the brethren components that bring intimacy or components of true fellowship corporate fellowship with the brethren very important acts chapter 13 verse 2 the bible says while they prayed and fasted they prayed they sang the holy ghost said unto them not unto one man let me tell you the importance of corporate fellowship like this it gives you the opportunity to partake of the dealings of the spirit in the life of others are you getting my point now so levels that your personal intimacy with the holy spirit has not brought you when you come together is like a corporate receiving hallelujah psalms 133 verse 1 says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity and he begins to describe it he says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron down to his bird down to his cat even to his garment he said for there god has commanded the blessing behold how good and pleasant it is the bible says acts chapter 2 verse 1 it says now when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all gathered together in one accord the holy ghost never came until they were together there is the mystery of corporate fellowship not just emptying sitting down and occupying empty pews no fellowship do you know that you can be together as a congregation but not have fellowship because there's bitterness there's anger there's competition there's party spirit seditions and all kinds of things but when you come that's why one of our core value the first of our core value as a ministry is love love not power not anointing not intimacy love love the bond of perfectness there is only fellowship when there is true love when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter laughter absence of laughter is a sign that something is wrong corporate fellowship what does it do it opens us to other dimensions of his dealings it creates oneness in the body the Bible says in Acts chapter, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, it says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith. The unity of the faith. The same understanding as a body. Finally, what are the rewards of true fellowship? Let me round up with this. I have to hurry up. Remember, our topic is koinonia, the ancient secret, ancient secrets to power. So, what is the reward? What is the reward? What is the reward? Huh. Be sensitive now because I sense the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, every time I just begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, it's like, it's like a magnet that you cannot resist. Although our time is fast spent, but somebody must receive something tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. What are the rewards of fellowship with the Holy Spirit? I'll give you just three of them. Number one, the reward, the child, the proceed of that intercourse between you and the spirit. The same way when a man meets his wife, something leaves that man to his wife. And over time, a child is born. That child is the consummation of their oneness. Is that true? When you stay with the holy spirit when koinonia is at work in your life certain things must happen number one 
authentic spiritual power authentic spiritual power I said authentic because there are all kinds of things all kinds of things right now authentic spiritual power authentic spiritual power the anointing for miracles the anointing for signs and wonders they are a product of intimacy brothers and sisters listen to me if you've been called into the apostolic ministry or prophetic ministry or teaching or pastoral any of the fivefold ministry you need the anointing for supernatural miracles signs and wonders men can forget what you say but they will never forget the impact of your meeting upon their lives many pastors are struggling they keep speaking but there is no grace there is no anointing there is no authentic anointing i'm not talking about laying hands on people that your words they do something to the physical bodies of those listening they do something to their minds the words do something the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the words he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me he has smeared me with oil where did that happen in the in the secret place while i was fellowshipping with the holy ghost a deposit of his ability rubbed off on me and i come out of the secret place with that ability the bible says the spirit drove jesus to the wilderness and he was there he was there for how long now 40 days and at the end of it the bible says he returned with the in the power of the spirit he returned in the power of the spirit he returned in the power of the spirit you want to see authentic power you want to see the anointing of the spirit brothers and sisters i believe in impartation from men of god but the holy spirit is the greatest custodian of the anointing you stay with him you have the anointing without measure dimensions of his anointing comes upon your life brothers and sisters listen it has nothing i don't care how weak you are right now if you stay with the holy ghost man woman boy girl including the little ones you will contact something that is tangible the world may criticize you but they cannot deny what is at work in your life you are the power in me you are the fire at work when you see mighty works there is an anointing you are my ever-present helper holy spirit and he anoints you so an ordinary man brothers and sisters an ordinary timid joshua selman when his anointing comes upon you look at samson he was a man who was weak but when the anointing came upon him he did mighty things and men will look at you they will see small you but there is big jesus there is big holy spirit so men will invite you for meetings thousands of people and when you walk through and see those wheelchairs and those blind eyes you know that it's not just about talking nonsense it's either it is there or not and you stretch your hands and you speak and say in the name of the lord jesus blind eyes open and you are hearing people shouting i can see and you are flattered yourself because you know that you are not the custodian of this this is what happens in koinonia he blesses us with his presence and so we can command devils to go and they must leave and we can command sicknesses to go and we can speak to blood conditions and change them and we can speak to situations and alter destinies a dear lady of ours wrote her exams and her wayek and, and when the results came out you know she was so excited sent me a text yesterday i met with her briefly today and this lady just nailed it on point i mean i looked i said goodness this is great the holy ghost can take a weak person mary said how shall these things be oh lord how will i have an international ministry as weak as i am how can this guitar produce an international ministry oh lord is it true that one day i will stand before the nations and god is saying do not underestimate the power of the anointing upon the life of a man they will pay you they will lodge you in hotel 
hands and you are there wondering oh god no there is this treasure you are an earthen vessel but there is a treasure the only way to take advantage of it is to carry you along because it's in you same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me oh i'm anointed say i'm anointed your love that rescued the earth lives in me listen brothers and sisters it's on the strength of the secret place that we can tell you you will never go back the same you see that that is what is responsible many of you came here probably for the first time you just said let's come and see what happened and you came and you encountered the anointing of the spirit if you are a preacher in this place stop doing ministry without the anointing you're going to fight everybody around you because of anger you will hate everybody around you because of competition and intimidation many preachers are angry with anointed people today because they they are unwilling to subscribe to the terms of authentic power it happens once in a while it just happens by magic and then when they see this happen in the lives of people especially when the person is a young man because it's not an issue of age whoever can pay that price the power that truly brings revival and transformation brothers and sisters is one thing to gather people but it's another thing for their lives to be changed there are many churches that the lives of the members are not being changed can i tell you the truth I know that crowd is not an ultimate basis to measure growth and impact but let me tell you sincerely when people are being changed they will come again and again and camp there that this guy was an armed robber he was a bad person an occultist all of a sudden he comes to koinonia for three or four weeks there are so many people especially many of the leaders and the workers today by the grace of god i know how these people were when they came some of them were cultists some of them were all sorts of people but the power of the spirit as a minister when people come to your congregation you don't screen them and throw the bad ones there are no bad eggs in the house of god because his anointing can change any man so a man comes with stubborn they say we have tried and tried and he said, no, not when the authentic power of God comes. You can handle any congregation. As a pastor, they can post you anywhere and it does not matter. They post you to a church of 10 members in one year. It's an avalanche because of the anointing. He said, it shall come to pass. Isaiah 10, 27. He says, the burden shall be taken from off your neck and the yoke from your shoulders and it shall be destroyed not because you went to school not because you can speak english because of the anointing there's too much talk in the body of christ because there is no anointing charles and francis hunter of blessed memory wrote a book they said that one miracle is worth a thousand words how true authentic anointing Acts chapter 19, 11 and 12, the Bible says, and God wrought special miracles. God wrought special miracles. Not just ordinary miracles. Brothers and sisters, if you walk in extraordinary miracles, the only thing you will go through that is bad is criticism. But the hand of God is like a signature and you write upon the lives of men, he is alive. That's why we will continue doing what we are doing. That's why anyone who comes here will truly be blessed. And we say it with absolute certainty. Not on the strength of ourselves. The Bible says we are not sufficient in ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God. Who has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letters. Because the letter kills. But the spirit gives life. Number two. The second reward of koinonia is multiplied grace. Multiplied grace. Multiplied grace. What does multiplied grace bring in your life? Ease of operation. Write it down. I know many struggling ministers. They are doing well, but you know that this, this, they are doing ministry as if it's a, it's a cross to kill them. No, sir. No, sir. 
Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If that yoke is killing you, then it's not from God. Hallelujah. Ease of operation in your ministry. Ease of operation in your job. There are many people who struggle just for little promotion. You have to struggle and bribe and pass. No, 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 no. When there is multiplied grace, the Bible says great grace was upon them. Great grace. Acts chapter 4 verse 31 to 33. When they prayed, the building shook and the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Okay, so just write it. We may not run go there because of time. Our time is up. Number three, the last one, and this is the most important I want you to carry tonight, is that the products, the benefits, the reward of your intimacy with the Holy Spirit is the release of your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. Please never forget this. This applies to every one of us now. It's one thing to be gifted, but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed. You can be gifted and it can be killing you. But when your gift is anointed. Ha! Huh? Your gifts and abilities become anointed. What does it mean to be anointed? It means it is activated and empowered to produce supernatural results. So your singing ministry, you have great gifts. But when he anoints that gift, all of a sudden, your keyboard that you are playing, suddenly you see wheelchairs standing up just because mike is playing that's a gift that has been anointed someone will come up here and just be reciting a poem or be dancing you may belong to a rap group or a dancing ministry and you are dancing and sick bodies are healed that's an ability that has been anointed many of us are gifted and we've spoken about gifts but many of us our gifts are not anointed this is my beloved son he has always been there. But now, whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. Listen. Stop trying to draw talents or draw resources. Forget about those things. Concentrate on the presence of God. When your gifts are anointed, people will come. When they come, they will come together with their own gifts and their own anointings. Listen. I never for once, by the grace of God Almighty, look at all the brilliant people. Let me tell you, I believe that this ministry has one of the best, excellent, and most effective workforce. And I say this sincerely from the depth of my heart. Hallelujah. From the ushers, the worship team, there is excellence at our level. The prayer department, men who are committed, you think they are just. I never, how would I have known them? Are you getting my point? I did not need to worry. When you stay in the secret place and your gift becomes anointed, distant shores and the islands will see your life as it right. Yes, you are a billionaire CEO, but until your gift is anointed, you will sit down there. Stay in the secret place. Let your gift, let your business acumen be anointed and you will do wonders. Sister, you're, you have God blessed you with beauty, but it's not anointed. That's why it is trivialized. You stay in the secret place and let it be anointed. The rod of Moses was a great rod, but it was not anointed. When he dropped it in the presence of God, the place of intimacy, God said, now pick up that rod. It's no longer an ordinary rod. He said, with this rod, you will do signs and wonders. Your academics is great, but it has not brought you any blessings because it is not yet anointed. Stop looking for resources. When you draw people, they will come into your life with their resources and abilities. When you contend for an anointing that can solve a millionaire's problem, he will come with his millions. There are many people who try to sit down and learn all kinds of gimmicks to raise money and run ministry. How much money can you raise to run ministry? Stay in the secret place. 
and while you are in the secret place you will bless a man who will come with millions and say it's a privilege to so ah ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see listen i'm telling you this will come when god gives us the vision to start building and by the grace of God, when this ministry has entered the next season, our job is to remain in the secret place. It will start attracting all sorts of people. They will come from different countries. You watch and see. They will sponsor the TV satellites and the rest. It's not in my ambition for once to think of how it will be done. Your job is have the potentials. Footballers, brothers and sisters, footballers that cannot speak English, receive millions of dollars per week because of their gift they never knew that you need a coach they don't even know adidas or puma all they know is that they mastered the art of playing with that ball and people rush and say please endorse our product during olympic one little girl 15 years or thereabout america's sweetheart little black girl who was doing exceptional things this lady could you know do all of those cartwheel and all, all of those gymnastics and she did it so well by the next day that lady was on the face of many privileges in america she doesn't know anything about marketing but the gift of a man when anointed it will call the relevant people right now we don't have people who are professionals and experts in 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 launching satellites and doing this don't worry when you stay in the secret place they will come one day they will come i have seen in my visions white men and people there was a time seven partners multi-billionaires i've seen it many times in my visions and they'll come and say god has instructed us that you and your ministry you are part of our kingdom commitments for life stay in the secret place stop looking for houses and cars don't insult yourself you're not that cheap what you have is valuable a day will come they will fly you in the private jets but you are not carried away remember it's you and the holy ghost in that plane you say holy spirit you promised me and you have kept your promise it doesn't fail the key to commanding uncommon favor is when your gifts are anointed they will draw people from all over. God is speaking to someone here. We're rounding up. Listen, brothers and sisters. The key to timeless relevance. Relevance, regardless of geography or dispensation. Is when you have gifts that are anointed. They will draw nations. They will draw nations. Not people, nations. The Bible says you shall call on one person and nations will answer say i'm gifted and tonight my gift will be anointed there are many people here tonight is the last time you will be at this level take seriously what i'm saying when god anoints your singing ministry you see if god does not anoint you the other way is to start begging everybody please i have an album will you buy it please i have this sponsor me sam help me when you are going for ministration, carry me along. You see people passing all kinds of complimentary cards. I'm an anointed man. Something happened in my meeting. 20 people fell under the anointing. Invite me. That is gift that is not anointed. Because when you are anointed, when you are anointed, people will love you. He said because of the ointment, so do the virgins love you. It's, I know he was talking about relationship, but it's a principle. Gentiles will not come to you. They will come to your light. They can criticize you but they will never be able to resist you you will see i i keep sharing it did you know that people bless my mother today people call this woman of god and bless her and sow seeds and do all kinds of things and that is only the beginning the secret of relevance you will never go out of fashion when you stay in the secret place that's why i say the greatest publicity 
men of God who are always outside running around trying to scratch for ministry ministry and uh, what do they call it a connection and ministry no 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 stay in the secret place Jesus was in the manger the white men carried their gifts they started tracing the stars the wise men they were tracing it where is this one who was born he was there lying down they took gold frankincense man these were great men they took it angels were announcing him he was there quietly remain in the secret place and you will see that people are talking about you everywhere from criticism somebody will say why are they criticizing this person let me find out and then he hears a message and say i know why they are criticizing you now while you're there quiet if you are talking and advertising yourself your grace is not anointed let her walk speak for her at the gates listen the secret to entering rest is that the anointing comes upon your gift you will rest indeed the bible says let us therefore labor this is not about struggle brothers and sisters please hear me the anointing of the holy spirit the fruit great grace your gift your ability your talent it brings rest and establishment it eliminates the need for envy and competition when your gifts are anointed truly you will find no reason for envy and competition when i hear that men of god this one is trying to throw this one this one is trying to throw this i just turn to god and i say lord i'm grateful thank you for all Da, 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 da. I can't remember the song Juanita Bynum Precious memories That you left with us I just want to thank you Lord I appreciate you for your love Finally have come this far Beautiful song No competition brothers and sisters You become too exceptional You insult yourself by creating competition There is no reason I always wondered why Benny Hinn loved every man of God I found out later on There was no reason for competition Who is now going to compete with him Based on what? Killing the sick or the anointing You only compete when your gifts are not anointed So you are any man of God that comes into a place You are threatened and that's what is creating a lot of hatred in the body of Christ. There are men of God when they hear the names of other men of God. There are men of God when they hear the name of Joshua Selman. It's as if they've had the name of a devil. It's not because they hate me. The solution is not to criticize me. The solution is to rise to the place of the anointing. Every time your gift is anointed, you will love everyone around you. Is God speaking to someone? There are some of you who are pastors of different ministries. Some of you fellowships, groups, churches. I want to speak to you. Never find yourself in competition and envy. Let the grace upon people challenge you. But not to cause you to resent people. And you look forward. I can only imagine how many people have been looking forward to hearing scandal about me. So that they will justify that everything they have said is true. There is a hand that lifted me. It will uphold me till the end And I will not be afraid There's no need for competition When your grace is anointed, brothers and sisters When you criticize an anointed man Those you are talking to will go and find out why you are angry Because they will say, why is this thing personal to you? <laughs> and then you end up publicizing the person again because the Lord is my light and he's the light of my life praise the Lord while that is happening I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request if you are yet to write please one minute so that when we begin to flow we just move and we don't stop so you have one minute while you are praying in tongues just write your prayer requests very quickly so that when it's time to pass it you just pass it very fast Man de kretu shebra de la barada da balada ba. Man ta la doso so predishi la korea da balada ba. Make sure you don't keep silent. Write the issues that have threatened you. 
and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me, what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God hallelujah hallelujah now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week again and again I kept seeing please pay attention can I have strings 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 hallelujah I kept seeing again and again spirits watch this spirits leeching onto people this is what I kept seeing like a man sitting on a man's shoulder I saw this over many people and I said Lord what is the meaning of this and the Lord began to to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families and the Lord said when I come up he said the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers dislodge those powers I saw them like a man like a child will sit down on the shoulder of another bringing a resistance to your destiny and I'm about to pray for you right now there are so many people under the sound of my voice so many people under the sound of my voice they must go heaven is here to assist us lift your hands everyone inside and outside there will be such mighty deliverances outside by the anointing of the Holy Ghost hallelujah I even see someone um, uh, suffering from severe migraine but then that migraine you think is just sickness we are about to make a shout brothers and sisters this shout is like the sling of David it looks ordinary but there is a circumcision upon it it's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm it's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men is a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic it's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now there will be mighty deliverances mighty deliverances hallelujah I'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we are going to shout that name Jesus my goodness I sense the anointing of the spirit heavy 
the power of God will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit some of you are already feeling uncomfortable it's the power of God especially many outside there will be mighty deliverances lift your hands now thank you Jesus father in the name of your son I pray right now and I sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the fire of the spirit oh restrain not your hand almighty oh one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch I pray that by this shout oh God there be a visitation that by this shout oh God everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name I command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of Jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of God is falling on people falling on people I cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft I cause witchcraft. I cause witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Malatata. I'm seeing altars on fire. That's what I see in the spirit. Please bring them out. Altars on fire. One more time, we're going to shout. Physically, many of you will feel the fire. Physically, physically. Right now, in the name of Jesus. One. Two, three, Jesus! Oh yes, that's fire, that's fire, that's fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the Lord. Outside, outside, outside. Miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. Mighty deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost. You must let them go. You must let them go. Right now. By fire. Hey, para toto totos. Breketes kata. La kata kata. Breketes kata. Barato. Hallelujah. lift your hands there are people here as i begin to speak the holy ghost will locate them i'm seeing ladies ladies a man comes to you in the night and sleeps with you right now by fire oh god locates them right now right now right now i cause that spirit i cause that spirit ladies ladies a miracle is happening to sister I cost those spirits. I cost those spirits. Outside, the fire is falling on ladies. Falling on ladies. I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside right now as i speak oh. the power of god comes upon that person oh, right now wherever that person is in the name of jesus in the name of jesus inside and outside the power of god 
comes upon that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. please lift your hands lift your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you are participating inside and outside we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of jesus families i see altars on fire are you ready now father any family under the yoke of bondage as they shout this name let there be a visitation one two three Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm hearing marital spells. Marital spells. Please lift your hands. Listen. Hear me. Something mighty is about to happen here. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as i begin to speak the wind i see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh god visit them right now in the name of jesus one more time we will shout that name wherever they are one, Two, three, Jesus! Spells, 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 be broken, 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 
coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas. Dorcas. Come and stand here. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, He must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't this place is not rowdy listen let me tell you something the anointing of the spirit does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the anointing does not make the difference without the anointing we are just making noise here but by the anointing and I'm telling you this no matter where you are whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back I want you to connect because God is visiting you and every one of you must have a touch Dorcas where is your mother my dear? Huh? I'm not based in Zaria sir no I'm not saying where is she? Mina, she's in Mina we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Father, change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, it's sir. even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he's bringing rest to your yes, family. This Amen, night. Sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, Why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you yourself otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship but hold my hands in the name of jesus lord bring rest to this lady bring rest to her in the name of jesus christ Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage there is a woman that had a miscarriage and the lord is asking me to minister to her we may not be able to minister to everybody but there is there is someone please make sure you don't sit back the lord is ministering to me about that person so that we'll just we'll just pray for her. Dogara, Dogara. I'm hearing a name, Dogara. Dogara. Who is Dogara? You. Your name is Dogara. Yes, sir. 
Where's your dad? He's at home in Kaduna. He's, he's at home. Kaduna. We have to pray for him. What I'm seeing will never. If they are vomiting anything, please and please. Carry them out of we are about to pray, please. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident. In the name of Jesus, it will not come to pass. We cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madam, I want to pray for you. The way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back now? Come, there's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family. Because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. It's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage yes, sir. because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. And that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay, you understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Oh. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand and pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? We have to pray because I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You're all Israel. And I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just one. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now. In the name that is above all names. There is no hiding place. The light of God is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is no hiding place for you. By the blood of Jesus Christ. You must release this woman. Is a spirit of death. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby snake. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is liberty for this boy. There is liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There is liberty. Hallelujah. Now all those who were brought out here under the anointing. I want, to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here. I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice. I represent the most high. At the count of three. Leave them and go. Right now. One, two. Go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of the house. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord. Live your life. Live your destiny. Restoration of virtue. Of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it from the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah.
all those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me, rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah. Come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying, and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away. I'm seeing like a baller. That's what I'm seeing. A trash place where they pour dirt. And I'm seeing a new seed shooting out. And that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny and the lord is saying i should tell you he's rolling away the reproach from your life in the name of jesus lift your hands and let's release miracle job if you don't believe in it put down your hand command you by the blood of Jesus you foul spirit you have oppressed this body in the name of Jesus I break your covenant I break your ordinance there is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady it's not just her can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady I curse you now I curse you I curse you by the God of heaven and I curse you by my office in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we are playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical, yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father, jobs now. In the name that is above all names. I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare. Everyone called jobless here. By the favor of God, I terminate joblessness right now. By the favor of God, I terminate joblessness right now. Anyone who has applied for any job, I compel them to call you. I compel them to call your loved ones. I compel them to favor you. here called Agnes Agnes I'm hearing a name Agnes the Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes we we'll begin to pray for the sick shortly Agnes I'm hearing the name Agnes God is ministering to me he wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes 
Do we have anyone there? Agnes. Your name is Agnes. Your name too. Your family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. begin to pray for the sick after this father in the name of Jesus bring breakthrough for this family you showed me that you're visiting this family go ahead and confirm your word with signs following in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you whoever is Agnes in your family let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus I want to begin to pray for the sick but I'm seeing a very serious situation here there's someone here with a swollen leg I don't know who that person is your leg mysteriously paining you and it looks it's, it's like swollen this is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me who is that person your leg is swollen where is it which of the legs Look what, look, if, if the devil, you remember I told you this, a body without the spirit, look what is happening to this girl. And then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife. Are you seeing that? Is, is, if it can, look at one, two, three, four, five people holding one person. Imagine what it would do to someone's destiny. I say this without a sense of cynicism many of the people that God is setting free attend churches every week look we need to restore the power of God in our churches and stop playing games with God because God's idea is not just for one platform hallelujah swollen legs no 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 don't, you don't you don't have to madam I see you too your legs for how long what's the situation with her is her leg swollen okay hold on she can't walk baby how are you hallelujah please help us with the mic who brought her okay no it's okay it's okay what's your name Annie, Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and we let them come out. We just bring this to special cases. Leg. Your leg. All of you who had a dream in a dream is like something was shot it's like i don't know if it was an arrow i'm seeing something that looks like a dream and something was shot on your legs if the person is not i'm seeing someone who had that dream it's like i don't know if it was like a gun or something or an or a, 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 a sharp object i know that it was it's like it was shot to your leg Something beat me when I was sleeping. I just broke up and screamed. So blood was coming out of my legs. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to follow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the Spirit. In my dream. You were shot? Fired at you? Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You prayed when you woke up. The Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God, and God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I curse it. Jesus.
Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is swollen. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in me. It's a for me to stand or to walk. Almost two years. It's broken. Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? I, I can't stand. You can't stand straight. It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another? Or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's the same. It's you believe? Coach. It's coach. Huh? Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out. Came out. The other this thigh. is the person I'm talking about. Yes, and it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to present. This guy Where is, is he? Here. Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos. Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, huh? sir. Yes, because sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate. Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hand. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cost this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I do. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? I have new pains. Since I, yes, since I feel sick, they used to swell up. Since, since, I, can't you... walk, since I was sick for six months, they used to swell up. But now, I can't walk. I can walk and be hearing sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? My leg is swollen for over five years now. Five years? Where is, which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand? I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? Two months now. I started to in this leg. Two, two months? Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis? Yes. Who else? Who again? I have leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs are swollen. Oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. Of Jesus, sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is like right in the name of Jesus Christ. I command freedom freedom for your legs in the name of Jesus I break the power of witchcraft mama I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit I pray for you right now every wicked spirit leaves you right now in the name of Jesus Christ lay your hands on your chest the Lord is bringing you deliverance right now in the name of Jesus this is witchcraft for five years I'm seeing a spirit go go in the name of Jesus, you can't remain in her. The swollen legs, I command the swelling to go down. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There 
is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Look how many people are trusting God for healings and miracles. I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place. It is not a thing of pride to have so many, look at, literally, maybe hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar. It's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the seat I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I will be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and strengthen. The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. matter what is wrong with you just a laying on of hands the anointing of the spirit is like a drug the moment it enters your body it begins to work and it brings you healing you will notice that some people are standing for healing but as soon as hands are laid on them devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities
They can't walk. For how long? No, no, no. What's wrong? For how long? You were born like that. Just like that. Let's pray and watch what God will do. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Can we hear me? Father, if never, you could not walk by your own. You will fall. Are your legs strong enough? Lord Jesus, is this not why you died? Do they not help you? He came here believing you. You have made this place a place of healing and miracles. Look at the condition of this brother. The legs. Look at me. Leave him. Remove your hand from him. Look at me. Have you tried walking before? Huh? Lift your leg. Try lifting. Lift it. Lift the other one. Lift it. Lift it. Come. You are mighty. Look at me. Just stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come. 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 Just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come. 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 Come on, you celebrate are mighty Jesus. You on your throne. Completely, the legs are open. If you are yet to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, my heart will sing. No other name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Outside, can we have it quickly? No other name, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater. Our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Lord we are praying please make sure you are praying outside stretch your hands towards the screen say Lord I receive it I receive it lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray Pray from the depth of your heart.
talking about Lord let there be testimonies in the name of Jesus turn impossible situations into testimonies Lord we agree we agree we agree in the name of Jesus turn impossible situations to testimonies stretch your hands and keep receiving I receive by faith come on pray all kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost all kinds of miracles Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, people that are insane, you cause them to be sane in the name of Jesus. We pray for contracts that long delayed. Lord, we pray that, Lord, they will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus. And we pray for a shield of protection over your saints, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit. Let the fire of God call, come on cold altars in the name of Jesus. Let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us, Lord. We give you praise, blessed Father, for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit. We thank you in the name of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony, I'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. 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 For many of you, it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ it's by the anointing it's not by English burdens are destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah this last segment you've heard me say it again this is the most powerful and most impactful segment if you're not a man of the spirit you may not understand what I'm saying please help them this is the most powerful of this segment right now before we go into this where I begin to prophesy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy that dimension of prophecy gives you direction but the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension that's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word never joke with the power of prophecy that's the power that created the heavens and the earth 
he said i prophesied as i was commanded before we do that very quickly everyone inside and outside there are people here tonight who are saying man of god i want to commit my life to the lord i've seen the miracles i've seen the signs and wonders but my way is not right with the lord you know that right now as you're standing here if the trumpet sounds you're not making heaven you know it right now having a christian name is not the same as having a relationship with jesus there are some you've given your heart to the lord at one time please help those under the anointing i tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now i sense a heavy anointing on me already that's why i'm doing this very quickly now if you are here please don't delay us you are saying i want to return home for whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of god and you are saying lord i have heard your word and i'm not ashamed to make jesus my lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now i'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep coming, God bless you. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won. Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. So, so deep with you. So, deep with you. We give you the praise. Sasa give the joy. One more time. Sasa give the Don't sit back there when you hear the voice of the Lord. Sasa give the joy. I appreciate every one of you for coming out this is the way to the cross listen no matter what you achieve in life if your eternal destiny is not secured it says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life but he said this life is in his son until you have the son you do not have that life lift your right hand forget about who is looking at you and in the name of Jesus I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you are not reciting a poem it's not a special number this is a decision there's one of you here you smoke all these kinds of things Igbo and the rest huh? but as you pray this prayer the power is broken over your life say after me as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life 
in jesus name i pray now i stretch my hands over you and i declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of jesus i declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life i release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of jesus it is wiped away i set you free i break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of jesus christ i pray hallelujah i want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you will catch up with us in this prophetic session i want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentlemen now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy work in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where god perfects all things as i prophesy to you please i want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't, don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time i know you are trying as ushers just stand around satan does not have authority i want you to know that there is an anointing manifestations are already signs that his power is broken but satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh so he begins to act around your mind to distract you when you ignore satan is one way of conquering him it does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the lord lift your hands i prophesied as i was commanded You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. You are Yahweh, seated on the throne. You are Yahweh, you are seated on the throne. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister today that be the heirs of salvation i pray for you every weakness in your life that weakness dies tonight in the name of jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year. An anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every student here. Oh, for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding. I'm praying for you. Some of you, listen, as I pray now, some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head. It's an impartation of knowledge. Right now, oh God, I release an anointing to change the story of students. At the count of three, let it fall right now. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it now. 
take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka ta 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 inside and outside take it for exploits 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 hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of jesus and by the power of prophecy i command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day i speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now i see at least 100 people 100 people like fire 100 people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 parekete embratata lakata i prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor 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 everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level i don't care where they are but i sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we're entering called august may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness shababa things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions lift your hands 
there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now creativity creativity i release it i release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of jesus christ anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's God's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light I pray for you whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you. Hallelujah. Everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year, you have tried by your strength. I'm releasing grace upon your life right now. Go back to that same thing and watch how God will bless you through it. I pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here I strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine lift your hands one last prayer listen I want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as I speak father I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth 
in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 I activate the prophetic I open your eyes spiritual gifts endowments of the spirit I declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of Jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow I prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring it to your life let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of people. As you have listened Hallelujah. to this message, lift your hands and give him praise. That you are going to read the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. Father, we give that you all no the praise. matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, with I assure you, share this message. You will know that this miracle service was unusual. To be you will know. And then subscribe to this Many of you right from this night. Tomorrow will not we reach you. Start having your testimonies. Right, 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 right from this night. Right from this night. Favor, alerts, calls. I mean connections. Mysterious happenings. I speak to the spiritual borders of your destiny. And in the name of Jesus, I command that every gate that has been closed, the Bible says your gate shall be continually open. So you have a gate. Your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Let everything in your life start working for you. I command the earth to work for you. I command the wind to work for you. I command the stars to work for you. Everything that is a disappointment in your life, I change it tonight to a testimony. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, keep standing everybody. There are many people outside. Let me speak upon your life personally wherever you are please make your way to the front quickly we have one minute to do this god bless you this is your first time you are most welcome there is a prophecy for you you must carry a signature no stand up keep standing everybody must know you came for koinonia hallelujah listen when you come here we may not give you hampers but we give you an identity you will go back with it and everyone will know that you met the Christ. Make your way to the front. Koinonia, celebrate them. Glorious. Glorious. God brought them by his spirit. Is this the best you can do in appreciation to what the mighty God has done for us? As